Hi folks, Nella here. Um, happy St. Patrick's Day if you're wondering what all the green is about. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, green things on me uh, for St. Patrick's Day. Um, and I'm going to do the Taylor Swift tag from Tatsuko. Say that ten times fast. Um, so let's get on because there are 12 questions, so this is probably going to be a long video. Um, I would suggest getting a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. I would really suggest tea though because I love tea. <laughs> so question number one. We are never ever getting back together. Name a sculpt you fell in love with, but once you saw it, you broke up. That would have to be Dream of Doll 2. And it wasn't even that I was super in love with the two sculpt. I was more that I was really in love with the idea of what I was going to do with the two sculpt. So, this is this is how that all came about. Um, in the first year, I suppose, of me having Flair, I had already decided who was going to be my next character. There's going to show. Though that wasn't really the terminology I was using at that point, but whatever, that's what I'd say now. And I went, well, I have Flair. I have to get Flair's best friend. Like, it has to be done. There was only one problem. Flair's best friend, actually, is a title that belongs to two people. Uh, belongs to Acantha, Acantha Banning, um, and Fusio, Fu, Dubois. Now, see, one year into the hobby, so that would have been nine years ago, um, minis ran the gamut of about 200 uh, to $400, $500, uh, with the middle price being 300 Um So I kind of looked at that, and I went, like, like, that isn't going to work. There is no way I can prioritize Acantha over Fu or Fu over Acantha there is also no way I can raise six hundred dollars and get two dolls at the same time. Uh, six hundred and then shipping, like, no, I can't do that. And that is when I had the brilliant idea of, well, like, wait a moment, Dream of Doll has an awesome promotion. It's better than buy one, get one half off. That, of course, is their BA and 2 sets. Um, which I actually just looked up. Apparently, it's still going on. It's still a thing. It's awesome. <laughs> um, basically, so a uh, Dream of Doll is about three hundred odd dollars. Um, but um, the set, and in my case, I was thinking of a tender BA for Cantha and a two for Fu, um, is four hundred. Now what? That's brilliant. This is like, this perfect. I, I can't do 600, but 400, I might, you know, in the space of like three plus years, I might be able to work that out. So, my cousin actually did order a set, um, and she got a BA, which she still has, now that I think about it. Um, but she got a BA, and her split partner got a two. So before she packaged up the two, she draw them over so I could see them in person. Knowing, of course, that, you know, I'd built up this idea in my head, I was going to get a tender BA and a two, and it was going to be a Cantho and Fu, and I would have the friendship triangle, and it would be awesome. And then I looked at the blank two, and I went, no, nope, no nope, no way, this is not going to work. Two was, and is, still, way too masculine for Fusio. I'm actually going to put a picture of a blank too, um, right here. You might be looking at that face, and quite rightly, you're probably shouting at your screen right now, Nella, that is not a masculine face. Well, no, it isn't. It isn't particularly masculine, but it's still way too masculine for Fusio. 
which probably gives an idea of how not masculine Fusio is. Um, but yeah, it was... And even though I still kind of like that sculpt, um, and it was a lovely sculpt in person, don't get me wrong, it was just because it was such a horrible fit for Fusio, there is no way I would ever get one again. Uh, well, again, there was no way I would actually get one for myself. <laughs> um, but because of that dose of nostalgia, I'm actually going to put two pictures here. Uh, the official stock photos of uh, Tender BA and Tender 2, and then BA and 2. Um, just so you can kind of see what I was looking at and imagining for those friends. <laughs> You know, nine years ago. <laughs> and that goes here. Question two. Red. Find an accessory with red in it. Does a basket count as an accessory? I feel like a basket counts as an accessory better than shoes. And the other option was shoes. So, yeah. <laughs> Number three, The Best Day. The song is all about nostalgia. Yes, it is. What was the first BGD you laid your eyes on? I've definitely told the story before. The story of the first time I saw a BGD in person. The first BGD I saw on screen. The first BGD I got to hold. Because, get this, they're all the same doll. And I have that doll. That precise doll. That doll? Why? Alwyn, of course. <laughs> yes, Alwyn. Alwyn. Literally her original owner's pictures. Um, and then seeing her in person. Uh, it was all her. She's the one who started it all for me. This whole crazy ride is all because of this girl. So... <laughs> Next question. Question four. Love story. Tell us about a character couple of yours that has a forbidden love. That is also Alwyn, interestingly enough. <laughs> um, Alwyn's forbidden love is her romantic love for her childhood best friend, Ethel. But it's not forbidden because they're both girls. And it's not forbidden because they're under 18. Uh, Owen, Owen's story starts when she's 13. Um, she starts her relationship with Ethel when they're around 14, 15-ish. Um, and she comes to the curiosity shop when she's 15. And is still there when she's 16. Um, so it isn't forbidden because of their ages. It isn't forbidden because of their gender. It is forbidden because they are both magicians' apprentices. They are apprenticed to master, master practitioners in magic, and you are not supposed to have a relationship that supersedes that of the relationship you have for the master who is teaching you. Yeah. Um, there's a whole bunch of actually really creepy things where really skeevy masters taking advantage of that fact that they are teaching young children potentially through their teenage years and onwards and being literally the most important thing in their lives um however Owen and Ethel's masters are not like that they experienced it themselves masters um but they see their apprentices as like precious younger siblings that they have to protect and teach um, about the world. So yes, that is why Owen is in a forbidden relationship. Uh, number five, pick your most bad butt tough guy. That would be Isaac. Um, he's not really a bad butt tough guy. Um, he just acts like one or tries to act like one. Um, I don't know how much a, a 10 to 13 year old boy can actually really come across as like a tough guy, um, but he tries, he tries to act like he's um, bad news, but he isn't. 
I mean, he's a personification of chaos, which means he often brings, you know, chaotic impulses in others, and then bad things happen around him. But he's actually not that bad himself. He's definitely not a tough guy. But he's the closest I've got. He's the closest I've got that has a head. Um, because, I'll be right back, I have to grab, you might be wondering, how is that possible? How can you have a tough guy without a head? Well, it's because I don't have the entire character at this moment. Um, I'll be back with that one. <laughs> and I'm back with the actual tough guy bad butt character of my crew. And that is Drew. Drew does not have a head. Because Drew's head was stolen <laughs> by another character. <laughs> um, but Drew actually is a total bad butt tough guy, um, tough girl, even though she is quite hilariously the shortest um, and looks kind of very slight, but she has serious muscles um, and she will fight you. <laughs> and if she doesn't fight you, like, physically and literally, she will fight you with her words, which are honestly as bad as, uh, as bad and as damaging as her double-headed battle axe can be. So, <laughs> number six. We're halfway through. Number six. Everything has changed. Which one of your dolls has gone through major character changes, be it story or looks or both? I'll be right back with them, because I know precisely who that is. Ghost. No doubt about it, it has to be Ghost. Other dolls, I have other dolls that have gone through major looks change, because there's been a new character put in the shell. But the most changes, this girl wins that competition. <laughs> most recently, she got blonde hair instead of white. But if we go back, this head has been Drew. Uh, the original Drew, um, so total badass, bad butt, sorry, bad butt, um, and had black dots here and no lip uh, color, um, blue eyeshadow, uh, white hair, red eyes, um, yeah, very edgy. Uh, and then this head was Nagisa. Um, Nagsa is a snow spirit who lives with, um, Maddie, a fisherman's daughter, um, and she had dark brown skin, um, so I blushed the head and body, um, well, the head, I did get around to the body, um, and then a pastel, pastel colored face up, she had lavender hair and pale green eyes, and she was very sweet, and she sung a lot. Um, and she had some seriously weird quirks, um, but those can be forgiven because she is a snow sprite, uh, she isn't human. And now, she is Ghost, and Ghost is sharing Hunter's body, and Ghost has blonde hair, and the only constant, actually, that stayed between those three characters is that the character comes from kind of a magical world, and is n and now finds um now finds themselves in a more mundane human world um in drew's case drew actually isn't you guess these ears mean some sort of elf or other non-human race um drew actually is human uh when she was this head um the ears were explained away by glamour um but Drew was raised um, in a magical world, very magical world. Um, and then Nagisa is from a very magical world. And Ghost is from a pretty magical world. She lives in this literal interdimensional hidden space in the woods. Um, so. <laughs> Number seven. What is your current gray doll? Oh, uh, the song is You Belong With Me, by the way. So, what is your current Grail doll? I've mentioned this quite recently, I'm certain. Um, my current Grail doll, and the doll I'm currently saving up for, is a Bat Chicks Lagoon. Uh, 
Batik's Lagoon for to be uh, Fleur Royale, uh, my main character, because, well, I made a whole entire video explaining why I want Fleur back, um, and how badly I want her back. Um, but the actual sculpt itself has always been a sculpt I really liked, um, and I don't know if I'm conflating a couple different sculpts in my mind right now. I don't think so, but, um, Den of Angels used to have a sub-forum, uh, for people, uh, members who were making their own dolls, uh, they were crafting their own sculpts. They, of course, have since gone rid of that, um, and I completely understand why they had to, but I loved that sub-forum. I spent so much time looking at that sub-forum. And I was completely entranced, and so am, uh, by Batchik's uh, dolls. Um, and I think even from like the the in progress sculpting pictures of Lagoon, I I knew I wanted one. Um, that I wanted one so badly. So that is my current grail. Um, has what I'm currently saving up for. Um, I actually have some things for sale. Um, I'll put a link to the sales video uh, down below, uh, which I think in turn has a link to my Den of Angels profile, so you can look up threads if you prefer to purchase on Den of Angels. Um, so let's go on to the next question. Number eight, Forever and Always. Which dull couple of yours is your fave? I don't have a couple. I know, I told you all about, like, Owen's Forbidden Love, but I did get a doll to be her, to be Ethel. It just really didn't work out. Um, it wasn't Ethel. That's actually Lily now. Um, remember when I said there have been dolls that have changes, but Ghost had the most? Um, that rhymed. Ghost had the most. Um, well, that's true. And the whole Lily, Ethel to Lily change was another big change. Um, so I don't actually have a doll couple. Um, assuming that is, that couple means romantic, which it typically does. It's not romantic, you usually say duo, don't you? Duo? I think so. <laughs> Whatever. If we're talking duos, um, my favorite duo has to be Isaac, this guy again, and his sister Haru, because their relationship is really cute. Um... It's really cute, and that's part of why Isaac... Th I could never actually seriously consider him to be, like, a bad guy. Um, just because of their relationship. It doesn't... It doesn't work out. He can't be a bad guy. Uh, number nine. Ooh, we're getting pretty far along now. Uh, number nine. Come back, be here. Which doll will you never get rid of? I'm actually going to go and grab them. Uh, I'm pausing in between this so you don't like have this space of like nothingness um i'll be right back so for number nine uh come back here be here come back be here which doll will you never get rid of this girl maddie well she's currently maddie but this physical doll was my first doll um she was originally, she was Fleur, um, she was the sculpt that started the Fleur's entire story, um, which then led to the creation of the Curiosity Shop. <laughs> um, and I just, I actually really like the sculpt. It's a very, it's a very sweet sculpt. Um, <laughs> I remember being so shocked because mature minis were really, really, really not a thing um, when I got into the hobby, so the fact that she had like this tiny head, um, and boobs, like really substantial boobs, um, like really threw me off, but it was just so charming, and her body is really nice, <laughs> it's all single jointed, but I don't even care anymore, um, it's really nice, and she's been through so much, so I, I couldn't imagine myself getting rid of her. I also couldn't imagine myself getting rid of Alwyn because 
as I mentioned, Owen was literally the first doll I laid my eyes on, on screen, in person, and held. Um, the skull here was the second. Number 10. Which dolly-related incident made you cry, good or bad? Oh, this thankfully was not actually... I say thankfully, I don't know why I said thankfully, because it doesn't bug me when people cry on camera. Um, but this actually wasn't caught on camera, so I'm... In one sense, I'm actually really glad it wasn't, because it would have been a huge mess, and I, if it had been recorded, I would not have stopped crying. Um, for good reasons! I should clarify, for good reasons! Um, I'll be back with that doll. That good, good crying over Dolly incident um, is Umiko and her rival. Um, so, as I mentioned, I, last video, um, I got Umiko over a year now. And I had actually, when I got her, I had just come back from, um, a, for a procedure at the hospital. And she was waiting for me. It was amazing. It was like the perfect timing. Um, she also means so much because I touched on this in the previous video that, you know, kind of the historical importance of her and, you know, the feeling of having a Volks for myself, um, etc., etc. But it's also that Umiko here is a gift from my family. Um, and, and it just meant so much. Like, all of those things all together meant, still mean so much that actually I was pretty sure I was crying as I was uh, unboxing her. Um, so, but it was, it was happy tears. It was good tears. Uh, number 11. Shake it off. Name an instance where someone hated on you. There hasn't been one. There honestly hasn't been one. Um, I've been the hobby for over 10 years now, and there's not been a single time someone has hated on me, personally. Um, hated on my friends? Yes. Hated on people like me? Yes. But me in particular? No. So, I'm very happy with that. <laughs> very happy about that. <laughs> um, and now, the final question. Number 12, Bad Blood. Pick your dolls that have the best rivalry. This, I'm going to do a bit of a disclaimer. Um, the two characters that have the best rivalry and the two dolls that have the best rivalry are not the same. Um, so I'm actually going to talk about both of those, but let's start with the best, the dolls that have the best rivalry. And I'm back. The dolls that have the best rivalry, Noah and Isaac here. Now, of course, it isn't the physical dolls, it's the characters. Um, but these two definitely have the best rivalry. Though, rivalry is not the term that they would use. Um, Isaac would call Noah his nemesis. And Noah <laughs> would say that Isaac is the chaos spirit housed in a child. Um, that he has legal guardianship over. <laughs> Noah really does not see them as rivals. Um, but in a sense they are. Um, Isaac is a personification of chaos. Noah is a personification of order. Um, those things are kind of contrary. <laughs> and they do get into debates on the merits of order and of chaos and the place in the universe. Um, and all of those things, so it's a rivalry in the sense, in like that sense, um, that you know they both represent very oppositional forces, um, and of course that Isaac actually does legitimately see Noah as his nemesis, um, but there's a lot of closeness. Um, Noah really does care about the two kids that he's, that you know that he is raising. By himself, uh, two kids being Ho and Isaac. Um, so yeah. Also, it can't really be too much of a rivalry, considering Noah is like 
at the youngest, like, three times Isaac's age, like, it doesn't really work. He has a lot more experience and examples that are grounded in reality, not just theoretical experiences. So, um, now, the best, my two characters that, characters that are not shelled, that have the best rivalry, uh, that would be Flair and Drew. Um, their, their rivalry is a huge thing in story. Um, Blair was raised by humans, but she was accidentally left behind, um, as a small child, by Nixies, and was disguised as a human. Drew is the human child the Nixies stole and raised, and then found out that they accidentally left behind their daughter back in the human world, and now they can't go and get her. So a lot of Leo and Drew's um, interactions are very much that of rivals. Um, they have two completely different views of, of that whole situation. Um, Drew can't wrap her head around why Flair would, wouldn't want to come back and be with her Nixie family. Um, Drew very much doesn't get that at all. Um, versus Flair very much sees her human family as her family, uh, the Nixley family as the strangers. Um, and there's a lot of really tense moments and fights between the two of them over identity and whether Flair should go back. And it's not really a question of whether Flair should go back because Flair... For Flair, there was no reason to go back. Um, there's no back to go to. Um, she has no connection with these people in her mind. Uh, in Flair, in uh, Drew's mind, um, she is going to bring Flair back, kicking and screaming if she must, but she will reunite Flair with um, the Nixies that raised Drew. So, <laughs> that is everyone. And yes, it is under half an hour. Um... <laughs> Which means this video is actually recorded and my camera has not crapped out and said that this is maximum size. Um, so yes, that's everything. Um, I'm actually going to probably be watching everyone else's um, responses to this tag, but that is it for me and bye!